So what do you think they, they did with these Qurans? They dumped them in the River Nile, they burnt the rest of them. It, it was systematic. Yes, the information is there in Wikipedia. Maybe in um, 10 or 20 years time, they will delete it. Yeah, but um, let's, let's just talk about one country at a time. Yeah, so now in Egypt, yeah, in Cairo, the River Nile's next door. They burnt them, threw them in the rivers, just dumped them. They got rid of them, these Qurans and Hadith books. This is what they did. So now somebody's going to turn around and say, hey, they had the, the Pashas and these other people. Oh God, these people were bribed and then um, they were replacing these people and putting their own people in power. Mm -hmm. You know, um, make no mistake. So this is why here is an old picture from um, somewhere in Central Asia, Samarkand. Yes, people are memorizing the Quran and notice there is no manuscript. This is a madrasa. They, did, they didn't need a manuscript. So the Muslims already had the Quran in their brains. Mm -hmm. Yes, because they knew these people, what these people do. So today, what we do is we use the Quran manuscripts, yes, mm -hmm. to, um, to memorize and learn. Like, for example, here are some girls. Um, I'm not sure where they are. Um, I think it's in Turkey somewhere. What they do is they will memorize from the manuscript, but the manuscript is not their source. After they've memorized it, there will be a professor, let's say that's me. I will test and I will listen to see if they pronounce everything properly and if it rhymes. You see? Mm -hmm. so, so the thing is the manuscripts today are even used just to assist people. But the manuscript is not the, um, the main thing. Maybe we should do the, the fake Quran manuscript since nobody's done that one. Yeah. Okay, now, first, um, um, Mus um, Muslim um, worship houses, you call them mosques. Yeah, they have, and mm -hmm. um, people say that there's moons on top of them. Yes? Right. Yeah. Can I ask why that is? Well, the research that I've done, as I found, was that what, what has been told to us that the Ottoman Empire created this symbol and it was one of the sultans who had a dream that one tip of the crescent moon showed his empire at the beginning of his empire and the other tip of the crescent moon showed the end of his empire mm -hmm. and because of that dream he put he they established that as a symbol okay of okay it sounds like mythology yeah. where um, people are just going to laugh yeah um uh, people are laughing in europe and america and many people are saying um you know, the Christians worship the cross that represents the sun, and the Muslims are worshipping the moon. Yeah? Right. And people talk about Muslims throughout the Indian subcontinent and other places, you know, Yemen, the Middle East, and they're saying, what the hell is going on? Yeah? Right. Now, I want you to imagine right now, yes, these people, they're going to build a mosque in their local neighborhood. Now, these people, when they do build the mosque, what are they going to put on top of the mosque? Is it going to be a cross or is it going to be a moon? It's going to be a moon. Why will they do it? They will probably the do similar reasons what you've said. Exactly. And the thing is, they don't even know anymore. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's what's that's what's um, actually happened. Okay, now I will tell you the reality of what's going on. Now, um, when Muslims actually pray, yes, um, prayer depends on the on the movements of the sun and the moon. Yes. Right. Prayer times and festival times, yes? Mm -hmm. yes? Yes, the beginning of Ramadan is based upon the crescent moon sighting and the prayers yeah, and five then, times um, uh, is based um, on the sun. Let's say the prayer times during the day, and um, that depends on the movements of the sun. Right. Yes, when the sun comes up and when the sun comes down. Yes? Correct. Yeah, so now the thing is what people don't know is, um, I'm going to show you something. What people don't know is that... Um, there used to be a device during the Middle Ages, mm -hmm. yeah, where, um, where Muslims especially, what they used to do, let me um, um, send you examples, what they used to do is that the Muslims used to um, measure what time um, the prayer is going to be, and people used to just buy a device, 
it'll cost you like today ten dollars mm. equivalent or something like this and they used to buy a device and this device was known as the astrolobe now the thing is um let me send you what it looks like and when you, when you see what it looks like you'll think ah i'm beginning to um um see now so the thing is this has to, this news has to go around the islamic world and they have to show um you know christians and atheists um this is what the device looks like in um you know many manuscripts many of these manuscripts are fake mm -hmm. but um uh, historical manuscripts but um it shows now this is what the astrolabe will look like in reality so now many of these astrolabes they put them on top of mosques or you could you could buy a small one and you could carry it in your hand and you can actually see the movements of the sun and that's when you know what time the prayer time is now um, i'll show you an example of um, when you buy one <laughs> of a small one but the big ones and they just put them on top of the um, mosques now that now if you if you look at official history official history is a joke this is what the official historians will say that um, when you open up Wikipedia saying, Astrolobe, it was likely invented by ancient Greece. Now that's the first sentence it says there. Um, now I could turn around and say, Astrolobe, it was likely invented by people from the planet Mars <laughs> around, around 1 million BC. Based on the research of Hipparchus, we don't know who he was, we can't even find him. But, then they will put, but, this device was, you know, like it became great um, uh, um, during the Islamic centuries of rule throughout the world. Yes? Yeah. And they say it was reintroduced. So I could turn around and say, hey, um, people on the planet Mars, they had mobile phones, and then um, people lost mobile phones, and it was reintroduced in the 20th century. I could write my own history. Now people are going to say, why is David talking like this? Everybody knows the ancient Greeks existed. You know, we know all these things. You know, it sounds realistic. But now um, many people don't know how astrolobes function. Yes? Mm -hmm. uh, but um, um, they turn around and say, it, it looks like it's in the shape of a moon and it's a star holder. Yes? Right. Now, uh, many of these stars could be six-pointed shapes or seven-pointed shapes or five-pointed shapes. And what you would do is that you would actually point them towards the top of the mosque, yes, right. or, or some things so that you could measure uh, um, if there is a mosque there or any building or, or on top of a pole, um, let's say what you would call a minare or minaret, yeah, and then you would actually know what time the prayer is. Yes, or, or where the position of the sun is, mm -hmm. or the movements of the sun, depending on what type of astrolobe you've got. Yes, because there's different types. So this, is, uh, so the truth is, it's actually an astrolobe. It's not a moon. So now, when Muslims look at at a Mecca, yes. So Muslim Muslims are going to have to speak up for themselves, or they can just carry on, carry on, carry on being losers that the world is laughing to, that they're worshiping the moon you know um and this is uh, this is what the common story is yes right. and everyone's going to say hey look at this the muslims have just built a skyscraper in mecca which is a clock which shows time yes yeah. because it also shows time and they're going to say it's a moon on top of there no it's not a moon and it's got nothing to do with a moon and it's not the symbol of a moon at all it is actually the symbol of an astrolabe so now people uh, and many people are now speculating and now it's become common information or common knowledge today that it's a moon now if the muslims are not going to speak up it's going to carry on carry carrying on being a moon and people are going to say hey Allah is the moon God now there's many of these people who are um, non-muslims Christians or atheists who are saying Allah is sin Allah is the moon God blah 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 mm -hmm. yes now the thing is if you if the Muslims are just going to sit there carry carry on carry on sitting there yes mm -hmm. now now the, that's a major issue so I thought I will get it out of the way now but, another thing just, is just a question just a quick yes. question um so this so when they built so that clock that you you're showing that to mecca it's called a sa'a how come it's never mentioned that it's that it's actually the what it, what was it called again the, the well, why why don't you muslims do research and why am i speaking like this is because you know um the muslims themselves yes why don't they just um do a little bit of research 
for example, um, um, there was a video you shared um, that I spoke about um, that um, there's Arabic decorations throughout Europe. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, one person commented saying, ah, the Muslims were great artisans, <laughs> so blah, blah, blah. Um, go and have a look at the cathedrals in Europe. Go inside and look at the artisanship inside the cathedrals. Is somebody trying to say there was no artisans throughout Europe? Is somebody trying to say Latin didn't exist or German languages didn't exist? But no, they chose Arabic because Muslims were better artisans. Hey, wake up. Mm -hmm. You know, people are just going to spread misinformation and they're going to spread their opinions. The, the actual truth of the matter or the fact is, let me just send it you. Yes? Mm -hmm. uh, um, because uh, there is, um, you know, it's becoming ridiculous and stupid even within the Muslim community. Um, let me just... Um, um, send you um, 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 the, cor the coronation robes of the Holy Roman Empress. It is same like saying the President of the United States is going to have Arabic writing on his on his suits. So somebody turned around and said, you know, commented on a video. I'm sh I'm, I'm imagining he is Muslim, yeah, and he's saying, hey, uh, Muslims were better artisans. You tell me. You tell me which president of the United States is going to put Arabic on his, you know, on his suit. Now, the Holy Roman Emperors, the word holy, many people don't bother to study German. The word holy is Hala or Allah, and they pronounce it Helikish or Heli today. We're, this is modern German, but let's look at old German. Old German is actually, um, simply many people can say, it is actually Arabic. But then somebody could say Old Arabic is actually German. You mm. can call it what you want. It was an international language. So now um, the thing is these Holy Roman Emperors, it's like um, somebody's going to turn around and say, um, I don't see the connection. Yeah, um, you know, go and do your research. There is Aachen Cathedral. These Holy Roman Emperors got crowned in Aachen Cathedral, mm. yeah, which is in Germany. And when you look inside it, it is exactly the same as the Dome of Rock. Now, 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 the Dome of Rock in, in many European documents, mm -hmm. um, it was called the Mosque of Omar, but now mysteriously it is today called um, As-Sakra, Mosque or Al-Sakra. The, the word secret and sacred, are, um, somebody will say it's English or um, Western words. No, it, um, it's Arabic, but it's English as well. It's an international word, Sakra, secret, sacred. Mm -hmm. Yes, so some uh, um, many people will not notice this. Now, when you go deep into, when somebody has a look deep, because why are these Holy Roman Emperors getting crowned in Aachen Cathedral? They all got crowned there. They're all using Arabic, and then the interior is exactly the same. Oh, the interior of Aachen Cathedral has been redecorated to add a bit of Christian things here and there. Um, because the building was supposed to be damaged during the wars, you can find old photographs. So they've redecorated it to make it look more Christian. Now, when you look at the Holy Roman Emperor's um, um, actual garments, it's got, um, you know, thousands of pearls there, gold, diamonds, etc. Hmm. You know, we're talking trillions of dollars here. And the design and, uh, uh, and the artisanship is exactly the same as the decoration of inside the Dome of Rock. And then if you look at Aachen Cathedral, oh, Aachen Cathedral hmm. is actually the same design inside. So it means the same people made it. Now, the thing is, um, um, the, uh, um, many Muslims are not willing to accept this, but the evidence shows that Germany was entirely a Muslim nation a few centuries ago. Yes, mm -hmm. it, was a, it was entirely a Muslim nation. Now, somebody will say, how did Islam go away from Germany? Yes, then um, do some research. Do some research yourself, and then you will find it's gone. Yeah, Imran, I gave you books on how they separated children, how they massacred people, and how Germany became a non-Muslim nation. Yeah, You've orphan, read it yourself, yes? Orphan trains, yeah. Uh, and under the books, you know, the barbarians, mm -hmm. there were the followers of Aaron, they refused um, Christianity, official Christianity. You've mm -hmm. read it in other books, the book of Jesus Christ, you know, yeah. the Waldensians, they just gave them strange names. You know, like it in the Middle East, they call one person Iraqi, one person, you know, um, Mujahideen, another person Taliban, simply they're Muslims. Mm -hmm. yeah, the, uh, um, yes, so in Germany, yes, even the name German. Um, no such name as German exists. It was the Vatican who invented this name and started calling it them. 
yes? Mm -hmm. Or they call themselves, you know, Alaman, yes? Which simply means men of Allah. Now, when you look inside Aachen Cathedral, yeah, this is called masonry, yes? I um, it's a topic that masons study, yes? If anyone cares to study it, Aachen Cathedral inside is also similar to, to the layout of the Dome of Rock. Yes, the Dome of Rock, which is octagonal. Okay. These things are not a coincidence. If somebody's going to say, ah, um, the Muslims came and built it, yes, you are beginning to see the connection. Mm -hmm. Because the Dome of Rock is octagonal. If many people have not seen the Dome of Rock, let me just send a picture of this building, then people will say, ah, I can see the similarity. Now, if the Muslims don't investigate them, this themselves, they're showing Islam, as a, a backward civilization, as a barbarian civilization that never entered Europe. Yes, so the Dome of Rock, yes, is actually the same, uh, um, similar construction, similar masonry. Masonry is like machinery, mm -hmm. masonry, machinery, yes, um, the similar construction. Now on the outside, you know, they've redecorated things and everything, even on the Dome of Rock, they redecorated it in the 20th century after the British invasion in World War One. So the thing is, what we can see here now, one, um, the buildings have got the same masonry. Two, the Holy Roman Emperor has got crowned inside this Aachen Cathedral, and they're using the same decoration, which is inside the Dome of Rock. Three, what we're finding is, um, you know, inside the Dome of Rock, the layout is the same as Aachen Cathedral. The arches and the masonry, everything is basically the same. And then four, we're finding there's Arabic writing on the Dome of Rock and there's Arabic writing on these um, Holy Roman Emperor's gowns. This can be no coincidence. If somebody says, ah, oh, there was a, they just brought a few artis artisans. <laughs> Go and look around Germany. Go and look around Germany. They had their own artisans. Yeah? yeah. You know, they, they've got their own things. Yeah? And if, they, if Germany was a Christian nation, they would use Latin or Hebrew. Yes. If Germany was a Christian nation, there is also the case of the symbol of Allah. Yes? Mm -hmm. um, the Alpha and the Omega and the Muslims are, are not speaking up about this. Yes? Throughout European churches are what they call church buildings. Yes? They're claiming that they're church buildings. You will find um, all over Europe, yeah, in um, all these medieval symbols or what they even call ancient Roman symbols. Yes? You will find the Alpha and the Omega there. Um, it's written in different designs artistically. Now, the alpha and the that that is um, what somebody's put on the wall. But now let me send you, um, let's say if you're going to do it with your handwriting, yes, it's called cursive. Yeah, they make these things difficult. But in the handwriting, yes, the alpha and the omega, when you handwrite, you know, there's different fonts. Mm -hmm. Microsoft Word has different types of handwriting, Times New Roman in different types. Yes, the symbol for Allah is the same as the Alpha and the Omega. And this is the symbol for God in Germany, in France, in England, in Italy, in Spain, in Switzerland, in Austria, in Poland, throughout Europe. Now, this symbol stands for Allah. But they are going to say, oh, no, in the Bible it says, Ila, Ila, Lama. It does not say Ila in the Bible, but... um. You know, many Muslims have have not even bothered to open it up and have and have a look. Yes. So, so um, the, there's these many questions. So this is no, this is not a question uh, uh, of about um, you know, artisanship. Islam was in Europe. Now the thing is, they've they've changed the history. They've modified the history. Now, if somebody's going to say they haven't changed the history and they ha and they've not modified the history, just go to Tel Aviv. Just go to Haifa, and the local Arabs will tell you, oh, 100 years ago, there was Arabic writing here, Arabic writing on every road. There were Muslims living here. There were uh, uh, Islamic buildings here. There was um, Arabic writing everywhere. And they'll say, oh, they changed everything. Now you can't find anything. And they'll say, oh, it just looks like I'm in a European city. So now in Europe, it was the same. It was German people and the Germanic peoples were actually Muslims. This is what the evidence shows. Yes, mm -hmm. and the same thing you can see in, in um, Russia, like um, the Muslims are, are going to turn around and say, hey, what is he talking about? Islam has never entered Russia. Um, uh, um, the thing is, Muslims have got to think, what if history has been modified? 
Um, for example, let's go through the Quran manuscripts before we go deeper into this modification because this is a serious thing. You see all these um, Muslims online that they cannot answer any questions. Let me let me just um, um, show you now. Um, okay. There's many videos now, thousands of viewers, yeah, that are showing Quran is written in the wrong language. The Quran is come from the wrong place. Blah blah blah. Everything. Let me just show you. All right. Um, I find these videos funny, actually. It, 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 wrong language. No, why I find them funny is because it, it, it sounds like um, the, the people who have made these videos, to me, they're, they're simply clowns, you know, so people to laugh at. Yeah, they, they usually um, find like a little bit of evidence and they just run with it, right? And they don't do a proper thorough well, research. This is, this is the evidence that Muslims now accept. This is not the non Muslims, this is Muslims. Who are saying this is official history? Yes, mm -hmm. um, Muslims are, are saying um, Muslims will say there is a Quran manuscript in London. Yes, they will say there is a Quran manuscript in France, Quran manuscript in Istanbul, another manuscript in Tashkent or Samarkand, Uzbekistan, and they will say there is the Yemen manuscript and all these other things. This is what the Muslims are saying now. Just have have a look at all this. And um, the thing is, um, the, uh, um, these videos, I find them funny. Um, ma many um, Western people are watching this now, and they believe this to be official history. They have, look at this, it turns around and says, a Dr. J or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, I, I've studied the information that they've given, and the information is just total garbage. The Quran is written in the wrong language. This is one. Um, um, let's see another one. There's more videos. The Quran is written in the... <laughs> wrong Arabic yeah when you see these videos um they're just they're just um for Muslims um um they sound realistic um look at this um you know the Quran is false yeah um half a million viewers where are you Muslims yes yeah, so what have you done to reply these people yes um so so there is all these all, all these things that are um um just um ridiculous Yes, I'm saying they're ridiculous because nobody has has ever, um, you know, challenged these things because maybe the Muslims are not even looking for the information. So now, um, let's just um, uh, let me just send you a few more of these people's videos. Okay. I sent you um, um, information before about these people. Yeah, please put put these in the video so that people can see um, that they've got large followings and they've got um, you know, they've got um. Um, uh, they've got uh, many videos. Um, it's because looking for them now, I, I'd, yeah. Oh, look at this. Allah is Satan. Uh, Mohammed is an idolater. You know, Islam is all a lie. Muhammad copied from the Jews. Muhammad was not illiterate. Yeah, the, 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 uh, these, these videos, I mean, if you see them for, for if you see them from a comedy point of view, yes, they're funny. Mm -hmm. But if you actually look at the information they're giving, they've got some serious information. Yes, um, you know, um, they've got some serious information. So now the first thing we will go through is the Quran manuscripts. This is um, very important. Yes. Okay. Now, what many people do not know is that the British invaded Cairo. Um, you know. In the 1880s or some uh, sometime, I don't, I'm not sure about the exact date, but they invaded Egypt. You know, an invasion. Let me just show you what an invasion is, because many people, you know, they just think oh, it's just an invasion. We don't know what's going on. Uh, let me show you what they actually did. Yes, and um, um, you'll be able to see what they actually did. Then um, um, people can um, judge judge things themselves. <laughs> Now this is very important because because all the Quran manuscripts in museums, many people seem to think that maybe they've got some truth in them. Yes, if they're going to be in a British museum and a French museum and a German museum, I think the Muslims should think again. Yes, they should think again and think: Are these manuscripts actually genuine, or have they played with these manuscripts? Yeah, let me just show you what what um, type of thing. And um, the British were doing and the French were doing. Yes? Yeah? So here is an example. They're in the Middle East saying, Yo, yo, what have you got over there, yo? Come over here. They're, they're just breaking into houses. Oh, yeah, when the soldiers have got nothing to do, if there's any beautiful girls, you know, 
um, they just took them and did what they want. Yeah. Um, and um, the thing is, um, they searched them for for Qurans or manuscripts or anything. You know, um, it's not a joke what they did. Um, there's one picture here which is happening today in what people would call Israel or or um, if you want to call it the Middle East or if you want to call it Palestine. The name Palestine was also invented by these people. Um, the, um, the, um, Western historians, they invented it so that they can say, oh, these people are the Philistines, the enemy of God, according to the Bible. So this is another name they invented. Well, anyway, um, this is what they're doing to the people. Yes. Now, if you're going to believe these people, yes, and, and they've turned around and said, we found these manuscripts in the Middle East. Believe us, we don't tell lies. We found these manuscripts, the British and the French, the Germans and all these other people. Can you believe these manuscripts? Can you? Clearly not. I mean, why would why would um, um, the, <laughs> the Uthman Quran, which is in Tashkent? Oh, it was just the Russians. Oh, they were just chopping heads, you know, raping, murdering Muslims. You know, it's it's like um, oh, you've got a mobile phone. Ah, yeah, uh, chop his head off. Let's just take this free. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, mm -hmm. let's kill him too. You know what I mean? That's how they took the mobile phones. So now when the Ottoman Empire collapsed in 1923, they took advantage. Hey, there's nobody to protect these Muslims now. We can do what we want. So now in 1924, mm -hmm. this is just one place. In Cairo, yes, the British, you, um, you can see the pictures. They're killing people. They went around from mosque to mosque. They went around from city to city. They even paid their men, yes, Arab, Arab Christians or Arab Muslim soldiers who don't know what's going on, confiscate every manuscript, every Quran manuscript, every what they call the Hadith manuscripts or Hadith manuscripts. They took them all. This is in Egypt. At the same time, the British are now in Transjordan, what is called Palestine and Jordan. The French are in Beirut. I want people to think the British, are, uh, the British and the French are in Damascus. The British are in Baghdad. Oh, by the way, let me show you what type of soldiers they had. Yes, in many of these places. Because the thing is, people are going to have to imagine, imagine um, what exactly happened. Now, people are thinking it's just, just the British. Yeah, I want you to imagine right now, who went with these British people? Who was their actual army? Because if people do not see the actual army, they're going to start imagining things. And, and they'll think, hey, you know, it's people who went there from England. Now, the thing is, yes, what, what you see, um, you see this every day in India. Yes, you will see in India, yes, um, um, what we call is uh, Muslims getting attacked. And also Muslims doing attacks in India. So now the British had, yes, um, um, the British had, um, in their army, Indian soldiers. Now, many of these um, British Indian soldiers um, were in Baghdad, were in other places. Some of them were Sikhs, some of them were not Sikhs. They had many of these Indian soldiers from everywhere, and everybody knows how these Indians are going um, would have would have treated um, the local population. Yes, mm -hmm. they got a low salary. They could do what they want with the women. There was mass scale rape, torture, and you know, we already know um, what, um, um, how these soldiers are trained, full of hatred, and you can imagine what they did with the Quran and the Hadith manuscripts. We're talking every city in the Islamic world was occupied, yes, by the British, the French, the Spanish, the Portuguese, the Italians, yeah. Make no mistake what these people were doing in their atrocities. They went to every mosque. Yes, Zituna Madasha in Tunis. I checked all these records out. Some of the pictures are disgusting, um, where they took women there. They took photographs of these women nude. Yeah, um, I don't really want to share them, but um, what to do is cover the women's bodies, but um, put these in the videos, because people will think, oh, maybe David's exaggerating. You know, Fez Mosque in Morocco, in Algeria, many people will even tell you. If you know any Moroccans, Algerians, Tunisians, Palestinians, anybody, Iraqis, and uh, go and talk to their grandparents and all people and say, what did they do with the women? Hmm. Yes. Ask. 
Yes. So, uh, oh, um, because mosques were very big, this is where the soldiers could sleep. And then um, they were safe at night. Yes. Mm -hmm. So um, the thing is, because people just need to sleep, you know, same like you and me, we get tired. Yeah. So um, the thing is, um, and these are the um, these are the kind of things that they, they were doing. Um, I'll give you an example, like here. Yeah. Um, here's um, a bunch of young girls somewhere in um, the Middle East. You know, cover their body just one, but um, um, you know, um, 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 people. Um, this picture is not that bad, but um, there's others. They called it art. Yes. They called it art, and um, they were taking pictures like this, uh, you know, or the white cloth. I um, you could see that woman, that girl is actually tied up. Mm -hmm. Can you see that she's actually tied up? Yeah. They brought her. Yeah, we don't know which mosque this is or what building this is, you know, but um, they were doing things like this. So the thing is, make no mistake what these people were doing. Yeah, you can actually cover it, but um, leave the legs uncovered, or people will not believe how um, what they were actually doing. Yes. Can you see what these people are doing? Calling it art. art. Yes? Mm -hmm. Can you see? Yes? Yeah, I'm looking at it. Yeah. Can you see it? Yes. So now um, uh, um, uh, they went around. This is actually inside the tents of the families. Like, if you're there, hey, you get out. Yeah, you know, they've probably chopped your head off by now. Yeah, there's your sisters and your mothers and the rest of them. It's time for them to party. Yes, for the soldiers to party. So what do you think they would, they did with these Qurans? They dumped them in the River Nile. They burnt the rest of them. It, it was systematic. Yes, the information is there in Wikipedia. Maybe in um, 10 or 20 years' time, they will delete it. Yeah, but um, let's, let's just talk about one country at a time. Yeah, so now in Egypt, yeah, in Cairo, the River Nile's next door. They burnt them, threw them in the rivers, just dumped them. They got rid of them, these Qurans and Hadith books. This is what they did. So now somebody's going to turn around and say, hey, they had the, the Pashas and these other people. Oh, God, these people were bribed. And then they were replacing these people and putting their own people in power. Mm -hmm. You know, um, make no mistake. So this is why here is an old picture from um, somewhere in Central Asia, Samarkand. Yes, people are memorizing the Quran. And notice there is no manuscript. This is a madrasa. They, di they didn't need a manuscript. So the Muslims already had the Quran in their brains. Mm -hmm. Yes, because they knew these people, what these people do. So today, what we do is we use the Quran manuscripts, yes, mm -hmm. to, um, to memorize and learn. Like, for example, here are some girls. Um, I'm not sure where they are. I, mean, I think it's in Turkey somewhere. What they do is they will memorize from the manuscript, but the manuscript is not their source. After they've memorized it, there will be a professor, let's say that's me. I will test and I will listen to see if they pronounce everything properly and if it rhymes. You see? Mm -hmm. so, so the thing is, the manuscripts today are even used just to assist people. But the manuscript is not the, um, the main thing. So now the British occupied Istanbul too. Yes, um, and the thing is, and the French and the Americans, you know, same like they were in Baghdad and Kabul. Yes, same like the partitions of India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, and the occupation of Tangiers and all these other places. Um, yes, and Casablanca, where they did their massacres. Yes, hmm. so the thing is, um, you know, they dealt with the manuscripts. So now, um, what did they do after they destroyed the manuscripts and took a few to their museums and pretended they're originals? You can make manuscripts look old. Leave it out on the shelf or, or, um, or something, and you, you can make things look old. Yet there is no evidence that even a single manuscript is an original. They occupied Istanbul, Istanbul top copy and everything. They've already played around with all the manuscripts. Yes. Mm. Um, have you? Have you? Can you read the Wikipedia? Yes. Yeah. All the 1924 pre-Qurans were destroyed. So now they replaced these Qurans, and um, what they did was, yeah, um, and they had a committee to um, um, re um, replace these Qurans. And let's have a look at this, these committees. Yes, people can have a look. They'll have to look themselves. Wikipedia, the Quran Cairo 1924 edition. Yes. So now here I've sent you something. The prominent members of the committee, the main members, yes, was um, a guy called Bergstrasser. Huh? What the hell's going on? Bergstrasser? Um, oh, he's from Germany. <laughs> hmm. He came from Germany. 
oh, he's um, he's just come from Germany. Oh, by the way, he's compiling the he's um, writing down the current Quran version. What the hell is going on here? And um, let's see who this man was: a German linguist. Yes, um, he was a professor at Istanbul University during World War One. But um, there is no evidence he was a professor at Istanbul University. Maybe he was there. They've uh, they've totally invented the history. We don't even know who he is, what he is, or why he was there. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now he's a he's a German linguist. He's uh, he's definitely part of part of a society that um um in these colonial empires. And um you know he was one of the the prominent committee members. Now let's go through all these committee members one by one. 1924 Quran edition of Cairo. Yes. Um they had these so-called Islamic scholars, whoever these people are. Yeah. Al Husseini Al Haddad, and then they had a guy called Jeffrey. Yeah, who the hell is Jeffrey? <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, so these guys have come along with their guns. Oh, you can't complain. Um, let's have a look at Jeffrey. Yeah, you know, um, the right honourable Jeffrey. Yeah, Sir Arthur Jeffrey was a was a Protestant Australian professor. Yes, um, and he came along with, as well. So now these people. Ingrid Matson, who was part of the committee, I think, also. And um, so what these people do is now what they do is the Quran that the people read in, in Ramadan, mm -hmm. yeah, what you call Tarawi, yes, um, the Muslims memorized it. So these people knew they can't modify the Quran because the Muslims will know. Oh, um, the Muslims had protests, you know, shoot them, yeah. Oh God, get rid of these, you know, beggars, mm -hmm. you know, get rid of these, um, you know, desert rats. Yeah, that's what they did. You know, anybody who protests, ah, he's a protest leader. Just go to his, go to his house at night. You know, his sisters are there. Take care of them. And then he, he, uh, there will be no further protests. So eventually the protests died. Yes. And they turned around and said there was Muslim uh, disagreement over what's going on in this Quran compilation. So now they didn't change the Quran because they couldn't do that because the Muslims were, um, um, what do you call it? Memorizing yes. it. Um, the Muslims, yeah, they were memorizing it for um, a long time, centuries. As far as I have checked, I, I could find the memorization goes back at least 200 years up to 300 years. This is from my personal study. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, so now, um, what did they do? Now, uh, at the end of the Quran, yes, um, the Quran mainly has many stories, and at the end, there's the prayers that people have that you, um, the Muslims call Kulaws of Rabbi Nas, Kulaws of Rabbi Falak, Alam Tarakaifa, um, what is it? Al um, uh, things like this. These are the prayers. So now, the smaller, the the smaller surahs, yeah, the smaller surahs. Yeah, they are separate from the stories. So now, what they did was, Yes, they put those in the Quran, but they decided not to put Atahiyatulillahi, or otherwise there will not be 114 chapters. If there is 114 chapters, you could divide it into 19. It becomes a multiple of 19. So now I will explain to you the 19 code that's in the Quran. It is only in the Cairo edition. So what, what they did with this Cairo edition Quran, yes, mm -hmm. the Cairo edition Quran, they decided what letters to put where and the spellings. Yes, um, let me give you an example of what they did. And in Tunisia, um, the Tunisians um, compiled their Quran, which is known as the Warsh Quran. Now, uh, now the Hafs Quran is in Cairo. They're not different versions. It's the same Quran, but with different spellings. Now, there's going to be many non-Muslims who are going to say that they're different versions. I will explain to you why they're not. Mm -hmm. Yes, so now um, the ruling in Egypt at the time, um, what do you call it, with the Pashas, and um, um, you cannot find their real history, and um, the history is a fake. They were officially, um, what do you call it, um, they call them, um, they were part of secret societies, Masonic organizations. Yeah, for example, we've got Tawfiq Pasha, yes, mm -hmm. and um, not only him, but um, even um, the, British the British and these leaders, they created something called the Grand Mufti. Of um, of um, the Grand Mufti of um, uh, of Al Azhar University, yes, mm -hmm. and the Grand Mufti, yes. Um, let me just show here. He was um, he was appointed by the by the British under their rule. It seemed like I've come into your house. There's ten brothers, yes, and I've chosen you 
to to become the um, the priest. I like you because I'm paying you money and you're going to do what I say. So now um, this is an example of the Grand Mufti, the highest Islamic title. Yes. What did this man do, for example? Yes. He turned around and said um, that meat that comes from the non-Muslims like pork. Oh, this is halal now. You can have pork. Yeah. Oh, don't worry, the British brought it here. They're selling it, they're going to make money in the big cities because in a big city, people don't do farming. In cities like Alexandria, Alexandria is a big city. Cities like Port Said, if anybody's been to Egypt, or Ismailia, mm -hmm. or um, there's other cities like Mansoura. Um, you know, it's big business, it's a lot of money, you know, in places like that. Not only that, he turned around and said, uh, banking interest, you can charge interest, that's fine. It is halal now. Allah has ordered it through his Grand Mufti. Yes. <laughs> so this is what's going on. Now, these Grand Muftis were also Masons. Yeah, people, um, people can check this information out um, themselves. And um, But anyway, so now let me show you this Grand Mufti. Um, here is an example of, of, of um, the Grand Mufti. He's, he's just gone to Tunisia. And in Tunisia, they're, um, they've got a committee that's preparing the Quran over there. Uh, what's he doing? Going meeting them. Oh, by the way, the committee, the, the educational committee from Caldunia Institute, every single member, yes, mm -hmm. was educated in France, in Paris. They, they were the workers of the French. You see? Mm -hmm. Yes? So, so it means that um, um, they were all, um, um, what do you call it, um, you know, um, um, working for the British, simply, yeah, uh, and the French. Now, um, so they were working for the British and the French. Let me just uh, send some information. And they formed a political party called the Young Tunisians. In Turkey, they formed a similar group called the Young Turks. In Morocco, they formed the Young Moroccans. Yeah. Well, anyway, these people, they were all educated in France. Yeah, you know what I mean. You know, it's like um, if you're a good boy and you're, uh, uh, um, I'll choose you, your children can come and study in Paris or London. Don't worry, we'll teach them only what we want them to learn. Yes, they're not allowed to learn anything else because we want them. Uh, don't worry, your, your son's going to be the prime minister, your other son's going to be the president. Don't worry. Yes, uh, um, when they're in France, you don't know what they're learning. So now... These people, yes, especially the Cairo Quran, I will show you um, the differences between the Cairo uh, and the Hafs and the Warsh Quran. Now, the differences people won't understand at first. Don't jump to conclusions. Yes? Mm -hmm. So now, um, if you, um, um, what, um, I've sent you both of them here, and they've got spelling differences. Now, let me explain the spelling differences. Yeah? Um, you're going to, um, I want you to actually put this spelling difference in the video like how I'm showing yes okay. because people must actually know um, what is the difference it is not a meaning difference now for example in some countries they spell hello like this there is two L's not one L in some countries they spell it like this yeah you spell it as you wish mm -hmm. so now the thing is uh, um, let's go back to the difference and um, um, go back so the difference and um, what you will find in this Hafs and this Warsh Quran. Yeah, um, let me send you an, an example again. Yeah, so what there's, you will a, find there's here, a big difference. I mean, it's not like the similar as hello because the first let one. Let me explain. Okay. It's better to explain. I'm going to send you 10, 20 examples, not one. But let me, let me, just, let me just recite it so that people can know the difference. So the first one you uh, sent me says, Tajma'oon. So that is the, the ta in the beginning, and then the other one that's different, it says yajma'un. So it's the ta and the yeah. yaj. Okay, 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 now. Now the thing is, it will say this on paper, but they're going to say this one silent. Yes? <laughs> so they're going to play games and say you don't pronounce it. We'll get to that next. That's why I said okay. um, um, best leave it till the end. Right. Yeah? Um, until I finish, I mean. Yeah, so now when you look at it, on, on one of them it says they accumulate, on another one it says you. Uh, in the Hafs and the Warsh, Tunisian and Egypt. In one it says, he will put him, we will put him. Now I want you to notice, what is the Grand Mufti doing going seeing um, the people in Tunisia and they're compiling it? It means they were organized. 
and uh, Tunisia was occupied by workers. So now I've sent you another one. It says, I give you, um, in, the, in the Hafsa or the Warsh, and the other one it says, we give you. In this one it says, they will be returned. It says, you will be returned. Now, um, let me send you a few more examples because I'm going to explain this, this carefully. It says, do you say or do they say? It says, a poor person or poor people. So now, mm -hmm. this is when you do the translations and the pronunciations, yes, um, because what they have done is inserted silent letters. Now, now I'm going to explain to you the lettering, yeah? As you've noticed, there's the spelling difference. So now there is a, uh, there is a Muslim professor called Bil Bilal Phillips, or, you know, Mr. Phillips, yeah? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So now let me show you, um, yes, um, you can read out the Arabic differences. What he does is he, he shows examples of the differences um, in some of these manuscripts, like the one in, in Tashkent, the Uthman Quran. They are going to tell you that's old. Nobody saw that Quran for um, um, decades, and it was in Russia. You know, where, um, people who came, you know, raped people, you know, they were doing these things. Yeah, you've seen the pictures. Mm -hmm. So now you will see the spelling differences. And as you will notice, that there is an extra alif. Yes? Now they're going to turn around and say this alif is silent. So now when you learn the Quran, yeah, these letters are going to be silent. Yeah? So the thing is, just put these silent letters here and there. As you can see, have a look now at this page. Have a, the next page, have a look at it carefully. Yeah? Can mm -hmm. you see it? It says, consequently, among the peculiarities of the Quran script existing to this day are alifs, yas, waws, um, written, but they are not read as well. It means they're silent, that are, or sometimes they're read, but not written. That there are some letters that you will find in these different manuscripts that nobody will read out, um, but they're not written down. You see? Yes? I now, let's have a look at this um, page that I've sent you. It mm. shows uh, Bismillah. Yes, at the bottom, BSM. Now, in one manuscript, it will say BSM. In another one, it will say B Alif SM or B Alif Sin Mim. Mm -hmm. so, that, so then you will pronounce that Basm, Basm. But now everybody knows it's Bismillah. So who put that extra Alif there? The British did this with their committee, the Germans. And, um, you know, um, the right honorable gentleman from, from Australia and their friends, the rest of them. Do you mm -hmm. see what's happened? So yes. they did this, yes? So they've put this there. If anybody wants, um, let me send you many pages. Um, people can read this in their own time. You can put the, these 10 seconds each, and then people can do screenshots and have a look themselves. You know, yeah, so, so the thing is, um, um, they're going to turn around and say, um, this, um, the, this Quran, it took them 17 years with the support of Fuad the first the um, Pasha of Egypt, and Azhari scholars. What scholars are you talking about? They chose the scholars themselves. You understand? It was printed by the Amiri press. We're talking about a third world country here. The press machines were made in Germany or in Holland or in Britain. You see? So now these Hadith books, the, Quran, uh, the Qurans, they've played with the manuscripts. Mm -hmm. So now the, the thing is there's all these Muslim imams. Um, let me just show. Famous Muslim Imams, yes, they don't know how to reply now. They really don't know how to even um, reply, um, you know. Yeah, so, so they've got a problem. They're going to have to deal with this. I don't know who these people are. I've just gone to um, um, Google Images, yeah. And um, the thing is, these people now, um, many of them don't even know how to answer or reply to these non-Muslims who've made hundreds of videos. That they turn and say, say, oh, we have this Quran manuscript, or this is, um, we know, this is here in London, it is very old, it has been verified, or in France. For God's sake, they were raping people. They were killing people. They dumped the old manuscripts, they've changed everything. And they're lying and saying, this one's old. And then, oh, what did they do in Yemen? Yes, many people don't know the forgeries in Yemen with the cameras. And other things, mm -hmm. these, these people are the type of people that they will leave a manuscript in Yemen a hundred years ago and say, hey, we just found this right now. Ah, can't you see? The Arabic here has been modified. Underneath there was something else, so it looks like the Muslims have modified this. <laughs> garbage. It's just utter garbage. Yes? So the manuscripts, yeah, um, have been changed. Yes? The Muslims are going to have to be totally 
careful on this. Now, if you want, ask uh, many questions if you want. Oh, wait, let me just send you a few others because Muslims are going to find this. Yeah, and let me show you because you're going to find this on non-Muslim websites. And many Muslims have now totally rejected the Quran saying, what the hell's going on? These manuscripts have different versions. So now I will explain um, the importance of um, 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 the mosques because in the mosques they memorize the Quran. So this is the only Quran that the Muslims have right now. That the Muslims themselves, they should actually not trust these leaders anymore. They have to write down their own manuscripts if they want to get the spelling correct because these people have played with the manuscripts. The Muslims are now going to the manuscripts and saying, saying, hey, Al-Duri version says this, this is an old manuscript. I don't even know um, 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 what it means by this Al-Susi version. He says we instead of he. So now the thing is, if anybody knows um, how the Quran is, the Quran rhymes. This is why you will find at the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah, it says Alif Lam Mim. Yes. Now when you read Alam Tarakaifa, mm -hmm. it is spelt Alif Lam Mim, Alam Tarakaifa. So why in Surah Al-Baqarah? Because now the Christians and the atheists are asking questions, saying, why will you say Alif Lam Mim and Al Alam Tarakaifa? Why can you not say Alam Zalik Al Kitabu? It's because the Quran is actually also, it's in poetry, it rhymes. So because people memorized it, we know how it is. So now when they wrote down Alif Lam Mim, they could have written A L I F, Alif. Instead, they just put A, and then instead of Lam, L A M, they put L. They did this deliberately so that it, it matches with their 19. And the reason why they did this 19 thing is, it is because they are using 19 for other reasons. That's a long story. It's in my books. It's too deep to go into in one conversation. But I want to make it clear. The manuscripts in the museums are forgeries. The manuscripts in the museums are forgeries. And then even, even the Qurans that are now printed, yes, and they use these manuscripts, and it's not the fault of the printer or, or many of these Muslim scholars because they don't know. Now the non-Muslims are going to turn around and say, hey, we found um, so many different versions, yes, in the Quran. Now the thing is they found different manuscripts. These manuscripts are not Muslim manuscripts. There's um, people, let me just show, um, um, the, I, I sent you the information before, you're going to have to um, go back. I sent you all these non-Muslim videos where they're turning around and um, they're um, discrediting, um, you know, um, Islamic documents. Wait, I've just found it. This one, I will forward it to you. This, the, um, this is um, a classic evangelical. Um, you know, he's a businessman. Many people say he's making a lot of money. This is nothing to do with religion for him. I'm very sure of this. It's more about money. Yes. Um, you know, this man, he turned around and says, what does he say? Let's have a look. He <laughs> says, fortunately, after decades of non-Muslims showing Muslims what's in their own sources and their own manuscripts, now the Muslims can reply to these people and say, they are not Muslim sources. They are not Muslim manuscripts. They are the manuscripts of the British, the French, the Germans, and the Italians who came and raped and tortured and killed people. And the Muslims are not lying. Those people put the lies there. Now the Muslims have an answer. Now it's up to the Muslims to go and reply to these people. They can go on his videos and all these other people. I don't know who they are. I've seen his videos. They're very, they're very funny. Normally I like to watch funny videos so that, I, so that I can laugh at these people. I find this man very entertaining. I laugh at him, same like I laugh when I watch um, the Friends video. You know, Friends, you know, Joey. <laughs> somebody, to, somebody to laugh at. Yes? You understand? Yeah. It's because if this person was actually a researcher, he would have thought, I will go and have a look at these Muslim manuscripts myself and see where they came from. Uh, the British went and said, we stole this manuscript and it's in the British Museum or we just found it or somebody gave it to us. Get real. You know, people should, people should um, start thinking realistically, um, you know, what um, the British, French and their museums, what they did all around the world. Any questions now, go ahead and ask. Okay, so I just wanted to go back a little bit uh, from when you when we first started with uh, Star and Crescent, because I remember in one of your books, I think it was uh, Jesus in Europe, where you mentioned that in one of the paintings, um, <clears throat> the original, I guess, 
what they what they wrote or uh, what they painted in the painting was the star represented Jesus and the crescent moon represented Mary. So I was kind ah, of, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now now that now that is in, in, in a different book. I'll have to open it. It's because what we'll have to go through is Renaissance paintings and and the Middle Ages paintings. Mm -hmm. It's um the thing is, it's not about representing, it's because the photograph shows that the star and the moon was on the flag of the West. Yes, right, right, it was right. not in a flag from the East and visitors coming from the West because when Renaissance painters, when they did paintings, they always um, left a message there. This is why you, when, you go, when you go to museums, you will see many people looking at paintings for hours. Like for example, I'll, I'll show you an example of the so-called crucifixion paintings mm -hmm. um, during the Renaissance. Yes, um, there's many pictures that... Um, that um, m m many European artists did during the Renaissance. Now, what many people don't uh, um, don't understand is why are many educated upper class and um, people from Europe and America, when they visit these museums, they're looking at these pictures for five or ten minutes with their hand on their cheek, going mm hmm, and they're looking. But somebody else will think I've just looked at it for one minute. There's nothing <laughs> interesting here. Yes, but um, I'll show you an example here. Now. Here is a painting which is from the 15th century. They say 15th century, but it could be the 18th century because these people have lied about the dates. Because if you lie about the dates, then people think it's older, but mm -hmm. they'll come and buy it. And they'll come and buy tickets for the museum and books about these subjects. You know, it's a big business. It's worth trillions of dollars. Yeah. So now um, have a look at this painting. It shows that Jesus Christ is being crucified. And he's been crucified in Jerusalem, and that is the city of Jerusalem. Now, the strange thing is, um, the Jerusalem in the Middle East, we're talking about the Jerusalem of the Bible here. Mm -hmm. We're not talking religion here. We are talking about what they're teaching in Western history. Yes? Now, according to Western history, yes, Jesus Christ got crucified. And according to Western artists, he got crucified beside the sea and beside um, a great waterway. Yes, so now when we look for this building today, we can find this building. And this building is actually in Istanbul. It is not in the Middle East. So now this raises the question of which Jesus Christ are they talking about? This is the Jesus Christ that got crucified. And he got crucified in Europe in Istanbul beside the waterway. Oh, there's many paintings showing this, not one or two. So now when, if we talk about paintings, well, uh, this is a very big subject and people will have to read many of my books. Mm -hmm. But anyway, it shows that the, the Jesus Christ of the Bible, um, who got crucified, got crucified in Istanbul. And he got crucified um, not far from this, um, what they call the Rumeli Hisari. Yes, mm -hmm. um, Rumeli Hisari, which is in Istanbul. There's many, many paintings like this. Renaissance paintings that um, show Christ, um, Jesus Christ got crucified um, at, um, at the Bosphorus. Yes, um, and let me send you a few more, then um, this will be clear. Because the Jerusalem that is in the Middle East is not, a, in fact, it's not even called Jerusalem. Um, when the Europeans went there, they demanded you call it Jerusalem or we're going to kill you. Yes. Oh, even today, the Muslims in Palestine are these Arabs. They refuse to call it Jerusalem. They say this city is called Quds. Now, if you if you are a Muslim in Europe and you're saying, oh no, it's Jerusalem, go and tell them it's Jerusalem, and let's see if they um, let's see what they do to you. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we'll see what they do to you. Anyway, um, I've sent you a painting. That, um, the first one is by Giovanni Giovanni Bellini. Um, they say 15th century, but it could be 17th century. These people are liars. And the second one mm -hmm. is by Albert Altdorfer. Maybe he's German or maybe he's Dutch um, because of his name, Albert Altdorfer. Yes, mm -hmm. and the other one sounds Italian. But um, they both show that Jesus Christ is being crucified at the Bosphorus or whoever this Jesus Christ is. Yes, and um, you can see ships that are sailing through the waterway. Yes, there's many paintings like this. And... Um, um, so the thing is, um, the Jerusalem of the Bible, yeah, is not what they call Darus Salaam or Jerusalem in the Quran. Yes, it's a totally different concept and totally different meaning. Yes. Um, um, so let me just um, send um, another picture here. This is a picture of the crucifixion by Gerard David in the 16th century. 
And here we can see that this Jerusalem of the Bible has got two great temples. One of these temples is red color and the other one is gray color. And then there is a castle there. Now, the strange thing is um, this Jerusalem of the Bible, yes, mm -hmm. actually matches Istanbul. Yes, because when you go to Istanbul, you will find the same tower called Galata Tower in Galata Sarai. Yes, and um, you will find the, um, um, the gray colored, um, you know, um, great church or temple. Or, uh, um, called the Sultan Ahmed Jami a mosque and the other one the Hagia Sophia which they claim is a cathedral there is no evidence that Hagia Sophia was ever a Christian cathedral or a Christian church yes mm -hmm. there is evidence that this bu this building was something else and then and then the Vatican's allies which people call the Orthodox Church but the history of the Orthodox Church is a lie that they turn this place into a place of worship but it were, originally was never a Christian temple. They converted it, and then the Muslims, under a man called Sultan Mohammed, yes, his army came from Germany and from Russia, and it included Arabs from the Middle East and Turks from Asia. Yes, but um, a lot of his soldiers were from Russia. Many people don't know this, and they were from Germany, um, Central Europe, and they invaded. They say 1453, but the dates could be a falsification, and then. Um, um, uh, they ended the joke there, this place became a joke, um, that it was like a Christian pilgrimage place. There are many people don't even know that even in the Bible itself, it says that, um, um, it says that um, um, the Jerusalem of the Jews and the Christians is at the Bosphorus, yes? And the Bosphorus is Istanbul. Um, let's have a look at um, the official main Bible of the church for over a thousand years is called the Vulgate Bible. The Vulgate Bible um, was um, run by the Catholic Church and um, others, but they will claim that the Vulgate is very old. Of course, they're going to say ours is always old. Yes, same like they told the people that um, these Quran manuscripts are old. So now they're going to say the Vulgate was written by St. Jerome. Yes, um, and they'll say in the third or fourth century. <laughs> Yes, I'm not coughing there, I'm just thinking, well, sure. <laughs> yes, they're going to say from the 3rd or the 4th century, yes, um, yes, the Vulgate Bible. But um, why I'm saying this, um, why, I'm, why I know it's a lie and a joke is because when you open up this Bible, inside the Bible, in the Old Testament, in this version, it says that Jerusalem is in Istanbul. How can that be possible? It means because that was the Jerusalem of the Bible. But then again, Professor Anatoly Fomenko from Russia shows that there was not just one Jerusalem, but there was many. And, th and the reason why there is many is because the concept of Jerusalem in Islam is like a house of peace mm. or, um, or um, you know, a place of security and many other things. So um, the, the people who followed Islam Yes, um, um, the people who followed Islam, they liked to call their city Jerusalem. Now, this is proof that Islam existed before this man who was called the Prophet Muhammad, or before um, official Islam, um, um, according to Western history, was created. Yes, mm -hmm. so the thing is, according to Western history, Islam was created and, created and invented by this man called the Prophet Muhammad. Now, the thing is, the moment Muslims say, oh, no, 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 there were not many Jerusalems, this, that, then this means that you Muslims are saying that Islam was created by the Prophet Muhammad and they were the first Muslims. No, there were Muslims for centuries. There were Muslims already who existed before this man called the Prophet Muhammad. Yeah. Now, Muslims, Muslims, um, if, if your book, the Quran, says this, then, you know, this is the, this is your history. Now, if you deny this history, then, you, um, you know, um, you're accepting what um, um, European historians have invented. Yes. Yeah, it clearly, so now, it, it clearly states in the Quran that uh, Islam was here before before the Prophet. And uh, it, clearly, it yeah. clearly says, what is the religion of Abraham? That, that, that was the next thing I was going to say. He, he makes that comparison of you say that Abraham was a Christian or he was a Jew, but he wasn't because none of those were existed before, yeah, during his time. There is no, ev there is no evidence. 
that, that um, these people would use or anything, apart from Western books that mm -hmm. they've got in museums, they're going to say they're old, yes? Well, anyway, um, for example, now the thing is, um, Europe was not always called Europe, yes? Um, this is very important. This yeah, th this was a real, this is this was a key moment in your book. I was like so, so shocked when I read it, where where it went from well, the last thing was Europe Arabia, European. Arabia. Europe was called Arabia, mm -hmm. and they just changed the name to Europa. I, I'm I'm sending you the evidence. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no, yeah, th this is exactly what I was referring to. Was uh, it was originally Araba or Arabian or Arab? Yeah, yeah, uh, European Arabian. Yeah. So now, for example, um, they changed um, the languages of Europe only in the last two, three hundred years. Now, the places where they did not change the name um, for Europe is, in the, is along the Mediterranean, because they didn't bother. For example, even in Corsica, if you go to Corsica today, Corsica is near France, yes, they still call it Aropa. Aropa, mm. not Europa. Yeah, if you went to Sicily, in Italy, they still call it you know, uh, Aropa or Araba, yes? And even in documents from Germany and Austria in the 1920s and 30s, um, you, can you see this? It says, Aro Europa Grechenland. Europa, uh, yes. Aropa, with an A, yes? So the thing is, it was only recently changed to the letter E. Well, anyway, um, mm -hmm. let me just um, um, show you, for example, um, there's many people in Scotland. Scotland's um, near England, where I live, and um, in Scotland, um, and they say that um, um, Jerusalem, Edinburgh is Jerusalem, Edinburgh. So <laughs> now the thing is, there's a lot of evidence to show that it's Jerusalem. It's because, yes, Jerusalem, Yaru, it's not Yaru Shalem. Now, in European languages, in ev almost every European language, they will say Jerusalem, Salam. It's because Arabic languages were in Europe, not Hebrew languages. Hebrew, it says Yaru Shalim or Shalem or Shalom. So if Hebrew influenced European languages, then they would say Yaru Shalem in English. They don't. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's like the Arabic n number seven is Sabah. Yeah, that's why they say seven. That, this is why um, um, in English they will say Sabbath. Um, because it came from the seventh day, it comes from the Arabic number Sabah. Now the Jewish number, uh, the Jewish word is Shabbat, Sha. So it shows English um, did not come from Hebrew. And when they say Hebrew um, influenced all the languages of Europe, it's a lie. So um, many people, many Scottish people, will say that um, hey, Edinburgh, Scotland, no matter what, they won't believe you. Yes, it's because when people when when um when original Islam and um, before the Prophet Muhammad was established in many places, people just said, "Hey, I'm going to go to Darussalam or Darussalam, Darussalam." Yes, mm -hmm. because uh, that was the city. Yes, um, so that's what they called it. Istanbul is a new name even before um, 1923. The in 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 modern Turkish they called it Islambul. <laughs> yes. But but in uh, this is the Turkish dialect. But don't forget, um, a lot of people in Turkey spoke Arabic at the time. So in Arabic, it was known as as um, um, Darussalam or Jerusalem in Arabic. Yes. So it was called Jerusalem or Darussalam. Istanbul was this name. Then they changed it only, um, you know, after the British, French, and the Americans invaded. You know, when you've got a gun and you're telling somebody, you've got to change your name. It's better to change your name instead of dying, don't you think? <laughs> you know, it's not a bad idea. I mean, I mean, who would want to die or just have their legs chopped off, your mother's fingers chopped off, you know, chop your father's ears off or let's burn them. You, you know, they were doing things like this. So, um, you know, but anyway, Professor Anatoly Fomenko shows even more. He goes even further, and from his investigations, he shows a lot of proof of this. And he shows that um, many cities around the world were actually called Jerusalem. For example, Moscow was called Jerusalem. Yes, that Moscow is actually named after after the mosque. That the that Moscow city, the evidence shows that just two hundred years ago, the entire city was Muslim. But if Islam has died in Moscow, it means that Islam could die 
in countries like Turkey or Iran or Pakistan or Indonesia or Egypt. Because Islam has totally disappeared from Moscow today. We can't seem to find it apart from, um, in, you can say in the last 50 years now, probably up to one quarter of Moscow is Muslim today. Up to a quarter. Yes, mm -hmm. but um, uh, apart from that, um, it disappeared. How did it disappear? And many Muslims will say, no, 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 Russia was never Muslim. The Tatars were Muslim, but Russia, no. Um, this information is is in my books. It's um, too long to mention it here. Yeah, it's because I don't want to divert, uh, um, because there's a few other issues that um, Muslims uh, um, don't know about. Now, these Europeans, they burnt many Muslim manuscripts. But... Um, but what the Muslims did is, um, you know, quickly with their handwriting, they um, saved um, a, a lot of information. Now, many um, historians will say this is many centuries old. I'm not sure how old they'll say this. They will say that this one is from, I'm not sure. They'll say this is Al-Farisi's treatise on folk astronomy. Yeah, it's a lie. We don't know who wrote this, but um, it looks like the Muslims were trying to preserve things after, after the Europeans invaded. Now, the thing is, there is a big subject now about the location of the Kaaba. Now, the Kaaba is located in a place um, that if, you, if anybody who knows astronomy and geography very well, it's actually located at the, at the central position of, of the world. But um, um, let me just show you... Um, um, let me just, just show you um, some of these. I like... I like these um, videos um, that um, uh, many more people are making like Mecca didn't exist. <laughs> Muslims are praying in the wrong direction. I like these videos. It's because, um, you know, it, it, the, oh, because they're comedy videos. Not because they're giving information, but it's just um, some idiots who've made some videos. Yeah. Oh, no, I don't mean idiots. I mean clowns. They're nice people. I mean, this is comedy because I don't find no facts in, in the information that they're giving. Because I checked what they're giving, and they're giving, telling us official history um, from Muslim manuscripts that the British and French put there. Not just the Hadith books. They changed the Islamic manuscripts for Islamic history wherever they went. Oh, I, I like these videos here. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. is market Mecca in the wrong place? They're, they've even put it global documentary. What garbage! It's garbage when you know uh, when you know the actual um, when you know any of these things. Half a million views. Where are these Muslims? Oh, look at this. Ten million views. Bloody hell! This is a big joke. Yeah. But um, the the people who are uh, making these videos, I call them jokers and clowns. Yeah. Because the truth is not because not because um, um, not because they are clowns, but I think they're either genuinely telling lies or they're working for some organization or some society or they're trying to benefit by making money from this. Because I, I just had um, a, a simple look at um, the Kaaba and its location. Now, according to the Quran, what does it say about the Kaaba? I think it says it's at the mother of all cities or something like this. Uh, yeah, it is the mother of all cities because... Okay. Okay now, okay, now the old Arabic instrument um, um, drawings that I gave you um, shows um, how the Kaaba was built. The Kaaba is not a cube. Yes, I will send it again. Now the Kaaba, its location was made with the cardinal points. And you will notice, if anybody knows masonry and what the 33rd degree is, um, I will teach somebody now. Now the thing is... Um, there are secret societies and organizations that use masonry, the compass and the square, and um, the, the 33rd degrees is to do with um, the 33 shiny stars. According to them, there is 33 shiny stars. But now the thing is the 33 shiny stars helps for navigation if you want to go to Mecca. Yes? Mm -hmm. So now the thing is the central star is the North Star Polaris. So now the way the Kaaba was designed, it is not a cube. Yes, it is not a cube that um, it was designed so that um, it will be at the center of the cardinal point so that you can get there. Now, the Muslims themselves, I don't know where you Muslims are, but there's millions, these, these posters have been shared millions of times. Now, the Kaaba is 36 feet by 42 feet or something like that. The measurements differ. Some people say 35 by 40. It depends on how big your feet are. Yes. <laughs> 
you know, yeah, but it is not a cube. Now, there's all these posters being shared online, the black cube of Satan, Satan, Satan. Yes, and all these things saying, look at this, the Muslims are worshipping a cube, the Kabbalah, the cube, blah, blah, blah. So now the thing is, these posters were professionally made. Because when I made my four posters here, I made them myself. Each one took two or three hours. They're mm -hmm. not easy, it's difficult. So now these people made professional posters, they talk things through carefully, and they're comparing the Kaaba to cubes. Now one, it's not a cube. Now, so this means the cube theory is dead. Now another thing is, the location is not just random. Yes, and let me just send you a few more of these posters. The dark, the darkness of Islam. So now this is what they found. The worshipper. Now the thing is, what's your name? I forgot. My name? Yes. Imran. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, your, name, your name can be, um, let, let's say, Trevor. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I think I should give you a British name. If you don't like Trevor, how about Charles? We have Prince Shh. Charles here. Do you like that name? So sure. now they're, uh, what, they're, what they are showing is that, uh, is that Muslims are going around the Kaaba and it looks like the planet Saturn. One, the planet Saturn is not the planet Saturn. They gave it the name Saturn hmm. because it's similar to Satan and Shaitan. They gave it this name. They did this on purpose in the last two centuries, and they're going to say this is from the ancient Greeks or Romans. That is another lie as well. That's another long story. People will have to read my book, Ancient, ancient Greece Did Not Exist, to understand this. So now, um, the thing is, um, um, the Kaaba uh, um, location, um, um, you can navigate to it, and th this is how they did the measurements. Now, another strange thing is, whoever chose the Kaaba, Whoever chose it, yes, mm -hmm. chose this location, I just found this man, yeah. Uh, oh, I just love this man's posters. I have to share them with you. It's because these people, and there's many people, they're just so funny. The Quran is in the wrong language. Oh, my God. <laughs> Don't listen to these videos. If anyone wants an answer, I hope I have time to make another video soon about this, yeah. And because he compares it with the Jordanian dialect, I'll have to explain that some other time. Let me just... Just explain. So, so um, how how does it work? Um, um, the location of the Kaaba. So now, what they did it, the Kaaba, or whoever did this, whoever is they, or if Allah decided this, yes, the location of the Kaaba. One, if you if you look for the central positions mm -hmm. of the continents of Australia, North America, South America, and um, Antarctica, the Kaaba is at the center of these continents. This is one. Now, this is no coincidence. Now, whoever chose this has chosen it at the center. Now, another thing is, if you have a look at it, it, it doesn't matter if you want to say the earth is flat or round, whichever one you want to say, if you go to the edge of the South American continent, North American continent, and Aust Australasia, and um, Antarctica, the end piece of the land, mm -hmm. and, you, and you look for the central position, yes, of all the land masses, the major land masses, once again, it comes to Mecca. Yes. Now, also, there is the golden mean. The Muslims know this. Now, again, or oh, this map, um, yeah, whoever did this has not. Um, he didn't do his circle carefully because he's put his he's put his circle at um, what do you call it uh, at um, at um, the Gulf of Aqaba, and by accident, it should have been in Mecca. Now, if you put it exactly at Mecca, it goes from the inner coastline of North America to South America, to Australia, Australasia, to Antarctica. Can you see? Um, the circle should be a bit more south. Yeah, I, he, I see what you think. Yeah. yeah, the Gulf of Aqaba is at Jordan. He's put it um, in, uh, in Jordan, yeah? Mm -hmm. It's because I've been to Jordan, so I know where he's put it, yeah? So, so it means that um, this location is actually the mother of all cities. There's uh, uh, other things to show it as well, but um, it's too long to explain those things here. Right now, the, um, like everybody, many people know that it's at the golden mean. But the golden mean is not the big thing. This information is very big. Because now many people are saying that you're worshipping a cube. You're banged down towards the cube. You're worshipping in the wrong direction. Now they've even started saying stories that um, the Muslims um, should be praying towards Petra. Now many people have never been to Petra, so they've got no idea what Petra is. Yes, mm -hmm. um, let me just show. Um, these things, um, Kaaba and Petra, yeah, um, it's not, uh, yeah, I'm not going to say it's mi misinformation, 
why should I use n nice words and say maybe these people have got it wrong? I'm just going to clearly say liar, liars. It's because these people know what they're talking about. Many of these people are professionals. Yes, and now there is Muslim professors who are, who are not able to answer these people um, very well. I've seen their videos and I thought, um, 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 uh, um, you know, uh, it's very easy to answer these people. They don't know how to answer it. Was the Kibala in Petra response to Danny Gibson, yeah, or who thinks he's the Don? Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah, these people like Dan Gibson, they've got millions of viewers. Now, if the Muslims don't, don't speak up, Many non-Muslims, millions of them are watching this. Millions of people think that Muslims are worshipping Satan or the Q. Now, I've said this information. It cost me hundreds of thousands of pounds to do my research. Now, if you Muslims are going to be, are going to be wasting this research, you're a waste of time because your religion says that you should go out there with big information and you should get it out there and you should show these people whoever are telling lies. I call these people just a bunch of liars. They're making lots of money from this. Yes, mm -hmm. you know, um, they're making money from this. Petra, Jordan, two civilizations, Kaaba. Uh, you know, and, there, uh, and then there's the other thing, the black stone. It is not a black stone and there is no um, things like Muslims are saying bid'a or innovation. I I've seen Muslims kissing the Quran. Why do they do it? Out of respect. Mm -hmm. uh, I've seen Muslim. Uh, um, you've got children. Do you kiss your children? Of course. Oh, no, you're worshipping your children here now. <laughs> uh, men kiss their wives. Oh, does this mean you're worshipping your wife? So now the thing is, many people are trying to turn around and say, Muslims worship the, the black stone or the Kaaba, the some stone that they kiss. I'll have to go through that in a minute. Because I've seen now, even the Muslims yeah, are, are writing some pathetic things. It's, be, it's become a joke. But um, let's go back to Petra. Yeah, um, I don't want these people to get away with it. Many people have not even had a look at Petra and they've got no idea what Petra is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, here is an example of what Petra looks like. Yes, I'll have to send you several pictures on this, otherwise um, people will not understand this. Um, yeah, I've, I've got to um, show this clearly. Now, Petra has got some caves. Yes, so now the thing is, um, Petra is a tourist site. Yes, whoever owns that site, they make money. If people visit there. It's money. I like money. Don't you like money? Who does yes. it? Of course, more people who come, I'll make more money. So now we are going to find similar places. Here is another place, and it's in China. And mysteriously, you'll see, um, I'm going to enlarge this. It's got the same caves, and it's decorated with statues of Buddha. Yes, it's got decorations there. There's many places like this um, all around the world. They call these caves and grottoes. And the thing is, um, uh, um, they've been designed so that um, they can make money. Because if you're going to go there, one, you're going to buy the flight ticket. Ooh, that's money. You're going to the airport. The taxis make money. Um, you're buying a suitcase to go there. That costs money. You're staying in hotels. Every process, yeah, along the way makes money. Yes? Mm -hmm. So now um, let me show you um, 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 a, a few more of these caves. So now let me show you in China they've done the same thing. This is on the other side of the world. They've done the same thing in India. Now, um, they call these Buddhist caves and they're saying they're ancient. Oh, they're many centuries old. Woohoo, they're very old. So now let's have a look at the Petra caves. Yes, mm -hmm. when somebody has a look at these caves, yeah, you'll find them in India, you'll find them in China, you'll find them in South America, you're going to find them in ancient Egypt. Yes, these caves are mining caves. If anybody has a look at mining in the 18th, 19th century, yes, mm -hmm. mining, um, what you will see, um, let me just show you um, um, these Chinese caves. They've done the same thing, magnificent pillars. They will say, this is our great civilization. 5,000 years ago, the people have come here. This is what they're going to show. Now, uh, and they're going to say this is um, something ancient. Now, the thing is, many people don't know what mining caves in the 19th century look like. Let me just find them um, many pictures. Yeah, in the 19th century, because they had, had they didn't have the bigger machinery today. Yes, and um, it, when somebody has a look at some of these mining caves on the outside, they look exactly the same like Petra. Petra is nothing more 
than a mining site. Uh, I'll, get, I'll, I'll, I'll explain to you how a mining site works. It's like you and me, we invest money and we buy land because we think there is gold in this land. So now we start doing mining. Yes? Mm -hmm. We start doing mining and we invest a million dollars. But after we do, after we invest a million dollars, do you know what we find? There is only half a million dollars of gold in this place. So we're going to lose money. Mm -hmm. You understand? So what do we do to this mining site? We have all the mining workers. We decorate it into a historical site. When we decorate it, the tourists are going to come or we're going to lose money of this mining site. Nobody wants this land anymore. It's a piece of garbage. There's no gold there. You understand? Mm -hmm. Yes? Um, I sent you um, these mining sites and pictures before. Do you still have them? Um, because I don't, I'm not sure which folder it's on my computer. Do um, you still have them? The ones you just sent Put me. Put them in the video anyway. Okay. Yes? Yeah. Put them in the video so that people can um, compare them. Yeah? Um, yes? Um, so the thing is, Petra is just a mining site. Yes? And we've got similar things. They've decorated it for tourists. Tourists. Um, let me just um, um, just um, look for these. Um, an example, because I know um, there's many of these um, um, mining sites in the 19th century. Um, because they looked totally different from what we consider to be mining sites today. Let me just find some pictures. But um, I sent you some before. Put them in the video or people will think David's making it up. Petra is just a mining site. A couple of businessmen thought, hey, let's make some money. And then they thought, hey, Danny Gibson's come along. Hi, Dan, how are you doing? <laughs> hey, Dan, I need to make some more money. Yeah, you know, we've got to make some more money here. Yes, and there's many of these people who are um, uh, um, they've translated the Quran and people call them Quranists yeah, or truth seekers. Many of these people actually think that, um, you know, that Petra is um, actually, you know, um, where the Kaaba um, or, or where the Prophet Muhammad actually prayed. I'm, I'm trying to see which folder it is. Yeah. Do you remember I sent you these pictures? A few weeks ago, did I send them to I don't think you sent the uh, mining ones to me, no. I didn't? No. You s I'm trying to think back. Uh, the only ones I do remember were the ones uh, that I saw were in your book in ancient Egypt. In ancient Egypt, okay. okay. So what they did was they redecorated mining sites and mining caves. And these caves are like square shape and everything and they're exactly the same for the Chinese Buddhist caves and they say these are religious ancient caves of the Buddha and his disciples of Krishna and his disciples here here is a um, bat mining caves um, I'm not sure where they are in America or somewhere and you'll see many of these cave holes when you go inside all they did was redecorated them there's many different types of mining sites um, yes um, I'm ho um, and here is another one. Um, you can check this out. And um, this was um, mining in the 19th century. Where is this one? This is in Ukraine. Can you see the caves? And they've mm -hmm. dug the place out. And there's houses at the top. They're not houses. They're the mining whatever. So now, if you compare this to um, what they call Petra, yeah, is is just a joke. Yes, the Petra caves are exactly the same. And b because they've become old. Yeah, because of the rain and wear and tear. The one in black and white I've sent you, yeah, the squares look more um, like square. But if you leave it for 100 years with the rain and the sleet and the weather, mm. then it becomes older, 200 years. Yes, so there were just mining sites. There's many mi similar mining sites all over the world. Let me send you a few more. Now, here is one in China. They've turned this mining site and they're saying this is a religious site from thousands of years. And what are they calling this? The Longman Grottoes. People can study this and they will think um, this is an ancient site. Here is um, another mining site. There's many of these all around the world. Yeah. And then um, people seem to think um, they're religious. But anyway, it's a scam. Petra is a scam. Yeah. And um, let me just show you. Um, oh, so now here the miners lived here and it became a cave town. Mm. Yeah. Um, people can look for these places online. There's a. Um, Many of these places, yeah. Um, Eski Kerman, here's another place in Turkey. What are they going to say now? 
and the Prophet Muhammad was in all these caves. Yeah, that mysteriously look the same. Yeah, uh, I found uh, I found more of them to show the one in Ukraine that I sent before. That um, you can put these in the videos to show that um, you know, they actually did mining in these places. Yeah, and um, what was it like inside these caves? So, um, inside and then the outside. Let me just send them because the thing is, what they've done is Petra is a mining site with all these caves, and it's just grown old. And they've now turned around and said, "Oh, this is a holy site." Yeah, um, that's what they want you to believe. And they, I, I remember reading in your book um, the pictures that oh, the, the early oh, pictures they look so brand new. Lived in these sites. Wait, they're going to say people lived in these sites, in these mining caves? Mm -hmm. It's because what people don't know is 100 years ago and 200 years ago, the people in power forced men, women, and children to work in the mining sites. Here, have a look. Women working there, they slept in these caves at night. This is why you're going to find bones of animals and everything in Petra. And they're going to say, the Prophet Muhammad and his, and his, and his brother Bilal's and all these Sahabis, they slept here, they were living here, here's the evidence, all the bones and everything. And then they're going to say the dialect in Jordan, yes, the dialect, this is why they say the Quran is in the wrong language, because the, now the dialect of Jidda or Jeddah in Saudi Arabia, um, which is near to Mecca and Medina, is a different dialect. This is why these people, I just call them a bunch of liars, you know. Yeah, I, they've got an agenda, whatever their agenda, they're going to say the Quran is in the wrong language or dialect because they will say the Mecca Medina dialect is, the, is different from the dialect of the Quran. Now, what happened is when the Ottoman Empire collapsed, people can check this, the Imam of Mecca, what was his name? You should know this. The, the Imam of Mecca? His name was Sharif Hussein. Yes, right, right. right. Yeah. Now, his grandson is, is um, the king of Jordan. Everybody knows this. The Hashemites of Jordan, yes? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what happened is, yeah, you know, what happened is, um, while the Ottoman Empire was there, and the Muslims were getting massacred in the Balkans, and in Spain, um, they were still, um, you know, dealing with the Muslims in World War One. People don't know about this. The Muslims were still evacuating Spain from Andalusia, even in World War One. And people will say, eh? I thought Islamic Spain collapsed in the 15th century, 16th century. The fall of Granada, 1492, they're lying. Because you can check this online, Tangier's population, or Tanja, in Morocco, was only about 30,000 in World War One. Today, there's over a million people. More than half the people ran from Spain in, in um, World War One in the 20th century. Well, anyway, um, Hussein, yes, um, the, uh, Hussein, the Sheriff of Mecca, he was the Imam of Mecca. Yes, he, um, what do you call it, he, he um, you know, turned around to the, um, the Khalifa or the Khalifa of Turkey and said no. And then um, he was the Imam of Mecca. But then after World War I, the British betrayed him. Yes, mm -hmm. because Thomas Cook wanted to send pilgrims from India. Or oh, Thomas Cook was a businessman, by the way. Um, yes, he, he's, um, his company today, in 2018, they did $10 billion of turnover. Well, anyway, um, um, they live in Jordan now, where Petra is. So these tribes from the Hijaz, yes, they used to get uh, money from the Ottoman used to pay. Ottoman used to pay Hijaz tribes. Yes, mm -hmm. because um, many, um, it wasn't just just paying money. It was, um, you know, it was like um, a subsidy because people were poor. The Ottoman, you know, had to look after them, the, the people. You know what, what, what um, you know, in Western countries, they um, pay money, you know, when you don't have a job. Yes. Okay. So what, what the Ottoman used to do is to the, to the tribes, to the tribes of um, the Hijaz, um, the tribal populations, the Bedouin tribes, they used to get money for food and things like this, you know, unemployment money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, you know, in the desert, uh, it's undeveloped. So you can check this. So now when the Ottoman Empire collapsed, they're not getting any money anymore. And um, uh, Ibn Saud and his tribes have just invaded. And um, what do you call it? Yes, the Sharif, um, the Sharif, Sharif Hussein of Mecca, he, he wanted um, to rule all the Arab lands. And um, the British refused. And also, you know, um, uh, they wanted to make money from the Hajj. Yes, sending pilgrims from India. The Dutch, the, the Dutch in East India Company wanted to make money sending pilgrims from Indonesia. You know, it's big business. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, the, um, money is money. You know, we all like money, don't we? Well, anyway, so um, the thing is, uh, 
and what happened what happened is yes they those tribes who spoke um, um the, the dialects of mecca and medina now had to run away and because there were tribes on camels and um, there were tribes yes they weren't actually living in homes let me give an example of how they were living or otherwise then um, people will believe these videos We'll leave, leave this as the, as the last point, and next time we'll talk about a few other things. But let me just um, um, show an example of what these tribes looked like, or otherwise um, people will not understand. Um, these tribes were um, basically nomads, apart from the people living in Mecca and Medina. But the people who live inside Mecca and Medina, yes, and um, those people, yes, who live inside Mecca and Medina, um, and today they learn the dialect of Riyadh the official dialect yes. so um, many of these tribes i'm sure people have seen photographs of um you know horses and camels and in their tents i'm just trying to look for it um let me see now i'm trying to look for it or people will think i'm making this up yeah so many of these tribes went north yes because um they didn't want to live under the saudis yes and also um the thing is um they went north that's why um um, well, they went north, they took their dialect with them. So now the language of the Quran, they made it the official language in the lands that now they, that they were officially ruling, which is called Jordan and Palestine. It was called Transjordan. Yes. Mm -hmm. So um, they made that their official language. Yeah. So have you understood that or is there any questions? Uh, no, I think that's enough to ponder upon and maybe start up start it up next time but uh yeah you've given us quite a lot and uh hopefully we continue doing this because there's a lot of this that needs to get out and this work needs to be done well, if the muslims don't share this information you know uh, it's your it's your religion you know people are laughing at you people um your religion you know everyone's saying is going down yes because you muslims um are um letting all these lies spread yeah you know what I mean. I, know I, what I just mean. found a picture. Uh, uh, this is, uh, here is an example, yes, of um, how many of these tribes were. Yes, can mm -hmm. you see? Yeah. Yes. So now they traveled to Jordan. Yes. And then a border was established between the, the Saudis and the, and the Hashemites who went to Jordan of where they're going to divide the land. Yes. Good. Um, the British were involved in the French, um, but it wasn't the British and the French Empire. Everybody thinks it was the Empire. It was the businessmen mainly, and um, the Vatican and other people. You know, money comes first. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, anyway, the thing is, um, um, Petra is just a mining site. That's all it is. There's hundreds of these mining sites from the 19th century, and they redecorated it, and they've tried to make it look old. And now the, uh, the Muslims are even thinking, ah, this is the art people and the Tamil come on yes you can see many of these decorations are not are not hundreds of years old oh yeah now they're saying we found many more similar sites in the hijaz and other places oh how come nobody found them 50 years ago how come nobody found them 49 years ago 48 years ago they didn't find them are you trying to say nobody noticed exactly. and they looked for oil in every place in that country and nobody noticed these so-called big huge buildings that look like petra that they found all over arabia have you seen many of these other similar buildings that they found yeah they all look and then when they found them they're brand new like it's like how oh yeah one that brand new um how come nobody found them in 1949 1950 1951 1952 1953 1954 1955 1956 1957 1958 1959 19 i could just go on and on yeah exactly and why and, yeah. why, and why was it british or europeans that found all these <laughs> that was the main one i think no i mean i'm talking about the ones that they found now in the last 20 30 years they're saying that the arabs found these the um, so-called many monuments there's many more and they look similar to petra mm. yeah the, there's there's so many more caves or whatever they're just invented places because saudi arabia is going to open up to tourism so that you can uh, you can visit many other places they're saying that oh, these people come to mecca and medina now oh they can come and see all these other places many of these places nobody saw them they didn't even exist yes 50 years ago or, or 100 years ago why have they suddenly found them now and then another thing is yeah petra mysteriously looks like um abu symbol in egypt yes so in egypt um, my book ancient egypt did not exist 
if anybody reads it, they will find that the Petra caves look exactly the same like the Abu Simbel caves. Yes, mm -hmm. um, let me just send you this so that um, people can compare it. Yeah, Abu Simbel is another fraud. They just built it and whatever, because now they're trying to say, ah, oh, there was Akhenaten and all these ancient things. And then Moses, he was the Pharaoh Akhenaten. And then he had his god disc called Aten or whatever, just extra garbage. Yeah. Uh, um, well, it's a good idea. It makes money, doesn't it? Oh, the Muslims believe it these days too. <laughs> you know, the Muslims are a big market as well. Yeah, it's a it's a big market. It's a yeah. huge market. So now, the let me just show you an example of the comparison of Abu Simbel to Petra, the entrance. They just um, decorated the outside. It's just garbage. Just fake history that they've just decorated. Yeah. So Petra. Abu Simbel, yeah, um, they, they created these around the similar times. The deep information is in my books. Any questions or comments, leave them, leave them. And then um, next time, if there's any major ones, um, we can talk about it. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. OK, take care and we'll talk next time. OK, okay have a nice day. You too. Thanks, David. OK, yeah. Bye -bye. Bye. Bye.